Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Taylor Comblusier, a mining analyst at Red Cloud Securities. Today's webinar features Visionary Gold Corp, a Vancouver-based mineral exploration company focused on precious metals discovery and development in the historically productive Lewiston Gold District of Fremont County in Wyoming. Despite a history of gold mining in this district, it has never been explored using modern techniques, but Visionary Gold is changing that right now. Today, I have on the webinar Wes Adams, who's the CEO and director at Visionary. The format of today's webinar will be comprised of two parts. In the first part, uh, Wes will provide uh, an introduction to Visionary, as including an overview of its flagship property, the Wolf Gold Project, as well as an update on exploration work and drilling so far in 2021. In the second part, we'll take your questions live, so please send them in using the chat, and we'll get to as many as, you, as we can. I'll note that you can type them in at any point throughout the presentation. To start, we'll handle the disclosures and then get into the presentation. So for Visionary Gold, there may be some forward-looking statements made on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the Visionary Gold corporate presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities, I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Please see our most recent research located on our website for Visionary Gold specific disclosures. So with that out of the way, I'll turn it over to Wes to go over Visionary Gold and what you have to look forward to with the company. Thanks, Taylor. So Visionary Gold is a, a new company. We've got uh, a lot of uh, activity going on in Wyoming right now where we're working on the Wolf Gold Project. And so uh, where the wolf is located is, is in Wyoming in the, in the setting that you see on slide one here. Uh, it's uh, we're looking for shear zone hosted gold within Archean greenstones, uh, much like a lot of the exploration that takes place in the Canadian Shield. And uh, we think that this is a, a tremendous opportunity in an underexplored district. Um, so I'll have uh, everybody can can look at the forward looking information disclaimer in their spare time and I'll move right into the uh, presentation here. So uh, Visionary is. Uh, a new company, as I stated, we've consolidated about 50 square kilometers in a, the historic Lewiston Gold District. Um, we're using a systematic approach to exploration in that uh, we are, uh, you know, there's uh, dozens of old gold mines around the district, but nobody's uh, actually gone through and systematically explored using geochem, geophysics uh, as uh, a means of, of uh, modern methods as a means of, of exploration. And so the opportunity here is really to, to tap into uh, the historic district that hasn't been, you know, worked in, in about 100 years and uh, uh, to really, you know, unveil what uh, what the district has to offer. So um, what we're doing is, is we're, we're drilling at the Wolf Mine right now, which is one of the past producing gold mines. Um, it sits on a shear zone that uh, was exposed at surface for about a thousand meters. And uh, it's mapped as being about, you know, up to 50 meters wide. And uh, we also have some parallel structures we're exploring. And we've extended the, the uh, gold footprint of the shear for about two and a half kilometers. So we think it extends undercover for about two and a half kilometers. So uh, in 2020, we were able to uh, channel across the shear structure and we returned an excellent result of 10.2 meters over 5.2 uh, sorry, 5.2 grams over 10.24 meters, and that included a meter of 39 grams per ton. So there's some serious potential here along the shear structure for us to hit some, some grade, and we've got two rigs turning on site right now, uh, part of our 3,500 meter drill program uh, to test uh, the geophysical anomalies and that we saw underneath the, the high grade workings at, surfing, at surface. So in addition to that, we're also exploring uh, regionally. Um, we've taken about 3,500 geochemical samples um, and uh, we've covered 88 line kilometers um, with our, our geochem grid. So that's, uh, you know, boots on the ground, guys in the field going out and doing, you know, good old fashioned prospecting. And then we can use our modern methods to analyze that 
and hopefully develop uh, uh, numerous targets here in the next uh, few months. So a little bit about my background. So I started my career in Guyana uh, working on the Turaparo project, which uh, we took from a, a small prospect in the middle of the jungle to an 11 million ounce resource. Uh, Grand Columbia just purchased that for 350 million and are taking it into production and it's fully financed. Um, I also have a strong history in the state of Wyoming. I worked here in the, in the oil and gas sector where I built a company that I sold to a major midstream energy producer. And, you know, my family's got a lot of history here as well. I'm third generation mining executive. And, uh, it, you know, it all started with uranium here in Wyoming. So we've got a lot of experience in the state. Um, I, I certainly think that Wyoming is a great place to operate and uh, uh, we're happy to be here. Um, so we do have a Canadian presence as well. Our CFO, Bob Doyle, is with Pacific Opportunity Capital uh, in Vancouver, and they provide us with uh, uh, management and consulting services and uh, and take care of all the, the bookkeeping. Will Van Horn is our corporate secretary, and he sits on the advisory committee of the TSX Venture Exchange. Uh, and then our chairman, John Kandurka, is an oil and gas uh, man with experience in both mining and, uh, and, and the energy sectors. And uh, um, then we have uh, several other geologists, Darren Lindsay, uh, Mark Blythe, and uh, and Drew Clark gives us a strong Toronto presence. He's uh, VP of Corporate Development for Metalla. So we, we've got a, a strong team of, of geologists that support the board of directors and have supported me a lot in the field this summer as well. Um, so these are all guys that have experience finding big deposits and they've been kind enough to join our team here. Um, we also have Stan Dempsey as an advisor on the ESG front who uh, needs no introduction. He's a National Hall of Fame member and was the former uh, chairman and founding <laughs> member of Royal Gold. Uh, in terms of capital structure, uh, we're unique in that we have a lot of insider ownership of the company. So I own a large percent of the, percentage of the company. I've also you know, put in a lot of money personally. Uh, the rest of our board of directors and, uh, and our management team have, have made uh, personal investments in this company. And so, you know, the shares are, are held really tightly by um, management insiders and, and friends of the company, a lot of industry professionals, uh, both on the investment banking side, uh, geologists. That's, that's what makes up our shareholder base. And uh, so I think, you know, we have a, a strong group behind us. Uh, guys that uh, that have the ability to to continue to write checks, and uh, we're certainly confident that the drill program is going to be successful this year, and that we're going to have uh, uh, you know a strong set of targets to follow up on next year. So the share price right now is trading at about 17 cents, um, fully diluted. We've got about a 15 million dollar market cap, which I you know I think right now uh, there's a strong chance for revaluation upon. Uh, a discovery here at the Wolf. And, uh, um, you know, now we can kind of move on and, and, and talk a little bit about, well, why are we looking for gold in Wyoming? So uh, this, this part of Wyoming is where gold was first discovered in the, in the 1840s. Um, it's, it's an orogenic, you know, low gold district. And so orogenic gold deposits have produced about 75% of the world's gold um, this is uh, unique in that it's, you know, it's a late Archean sedimentary basin, and, and that provides the perfect setting for gold to be uh, deposited. And, um, you know, we think it's, you know, there's potential for extremely high grades, uh, but we're focused on size as well. We want something that's going to be commercially viable um, for, for Wyoming. So uh, a lot of people know Wyoming as a uranium producer and an oil and gas producer and a coal producer. We produce about 39% of uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, coal in Wyoming every year. Uh, but as uh, the tides are turning, 
Um, you know, the fossil fuels are, are going by the wayside and we need to create new jobs in the resource sector. So I think that, uh, that gold mining and uh, uh, exploration for gold and base metals is really a, a good opportunity for Wyoming to replace some of the jobs that are being lost in the energy sector. And, um, you know, it's always been a part of the history in Wyoming, uh, especially up here in the Miners Delight Basin where we're focused. Uh, but there's been no, you know, meaningful modern day gold mining in the district. So I think that's an opportunity for us to, to restore the history there, as well as create some new history, um, you know, by uh, finding new deposits, hopefully that ones that will be uh, commercially viable. So a little bit about the uh, history of, of the district here. So on the right, you can see the Carissa Mill that operated for about 100 years until 1956. And uh, there's dozens of other small mines in the area. I estimate that uh, the district probably, you know, produced between half a million to a million ounces of gold. Um, about a quarter million of that came from the Carissa, which, which was a high grade shear hosted gold deposit, you know, not unlike what we're looking at at the Wolf there. Um, so the idea is for us to, uh, to find these uh, shear structures that are mineralized. Uh, and we can talk a little bit about more that in the subsequent slides. So a um, little update on the geology. So uh, why, uh, why are these rocks in Wyoming related to the rocks that are in the Canadian Shield? Uh, districts like the Superior Province, you know, where James Bay um, is, is located, or the Slave Province, where the Yellowknife District is, is located. So before what was called the Trans-Hudson Orogeny, which is where that little blue area in the middle of your screen um, emerged and created most of the, well, created the Rocky Mountains and, and many of the other uh, uh, mountain structures. Uh, all these all these Archean rocks, which are the pink ones, were related, right? And so all of these are the same age and, uh, um, the, you know, typically they're host to some of the world's, you know, best gold deposits in Canada. Um, the, the Wyoming Craton has really not been explored for base metals or precious metals um, in recent years because they've had such, such a strong energy uh, economy. And so I think there's an opportunity for us to tap into one of the last uh, Archean greenstone belts that's not been explored with modern methods. And so we'll zoom in now. What we're zoomed into is the uh, Miner's Delight Formation. It's an Archean craton that's uh, uh, pinched on both sides by these big Archean, Ar uh, Archean granites. And so what that has done is it's, it's fractured the rock. There's a good chance that those uh, intrusives are also responsible for the mineralizing fluid that came and mineralized these shear structures. And so what it's left us is two distinct gold trends. One on the South Pass Atlantic City side, which is where the Carissa was located. And then uh, a very little known a gold district called the Lewiston Gold District that was uh, uh, has been dormant for about 100 years since the 1930s is, is when the last gold was produced there. But there's dozens of old mines um, that were, uh, you know, were pr productive uh, through the 1850s until about the 1930s. So what we're doing is we're going in and evaluating all these old prospects, as well as, you know, covering the entire district with uh, geochemical um, sampling and uh, identifying where the best targets are at. And so the biggest structure that we found was the wolf shear, which sits on a standalone shear by itself. And uh, we've mapped that for about uh, two and a half kilometers here. We've staked all around it. We have the patented claims, which is private land, which sits right on the, the deposit. So um, the white area within the blue is where the, the wolf mine is located. And then that red line uh, identifies the, the, the shear as it's been mapped by our geologists. So we have 140 acres of patented claims. Uh, that's the white within the blue. Uh, and then uh, 3,000 acres right within this Lewiston Gold District, and then 50 square kilometers regionally um, of, of land that we're exploring and looking for new deposits on. Uh, all of that's, you know, within a stone's throw, throw of, the, of the Wolf Project. So we've got an area here where we're focused, and uh, I think it really has a lot of district scale uh, upside. 
Um, the MIS area, we're, we're testing some, you know, copper gold mineralization there. Uh, we sampled up to 2% copper and three grams of gold. Uh, at the Wolf, obviously, we, we had up to 39 grams per ton and, uh, and several samples that were over five grams a ton. So that's what's led us to, to drilling the Wolf first. Uh, but we do have a lot of other exciting targets in the BM area where the mint mine is located. Uh, that's tested, you know, tested out at three ounces a ton over two and a half uh, foot channel. And um, so we have lots of targets. What we're doing right now while we're drilling the wolf is we're evaluating uh, where we're going to drill next year and actually permitting um, the additional drill targets. So the idea is to prove our principle at the wolf this year. And then we'll come back and drill several different targets next year, um, you know, and, and, and I think that really speaks to the, the district scale potential here. So zooming in on the wolf shear zone itself, um, this is what we're currently testing. The, the hole that we're drilling right now is right underneath the old wolf mine. We've also stepped out about 200 meters uh, down the strike, and we're also going to uh, be testing, you know, about a thousand meters of uh, of strike length here on this shear structure. And so uh, we know that the, this structure is mineralized at surface. Uh, we've sampled super high grades right at the Wolf Mine, and then 500 meters away, uh, we've t we've tested over a gram per ton gold, and then 500 meters to the north we have uh, rock chip samples that were over five grams from last year. So um, we've got, you know, some, some great targets here at the Wolf. We're going to be covering about a thousand uh, meters of, of strike or one kilometer. And then we'll uh, uh, continue um, to identify our targets regionally. Uh, what's interesting about the Wolf is we have identified uh, four separate structures that, that are running parallel to the foliation uh, that are um, shear zones. And um, so what we're doing right now is, is preparing those for drilling and working on our permitting, uh, you know, and all the environmental and cultural work that we do prior to, uh, to drilling. And then next year we'll be drilling those, um, but we'll have a lot of results from our drilling at the Wolf this year. And that'll start coming in, you know, in uh, the next uh, couple weeks and, and in the subsequent months following that. Um, we're very excited about what we're seeing in the core and, uh, uh, you know, confident that we will have a discovery hole here at the Wolf. Um, so just kind of a little recap. Um, we, you know, we do have uh, grades uh, above the Wolf on parallel structures. We also have uh, grades, you know, about a thousand meters north of the Wolf along Strike, and uh, you know, the average uh, uh, from you know from our mine dump samples was about uh, two grams. So uh, there's there's some serious grade there, um, and we, you know, are excited about moving forward. Um, last year we did some geophysical work underneath the uh, Wolf mine. Uh, we had a, uh, a, sh a shear zone that was interpreted uh, sh with the resistivity survey. So what this is showing us is where the rock is fractured and broken. It's a good place to, to host gold deposits. And then underneath that, uh, we have an increase in uh, chargeability. And so that's uh, suggesting that there's sulfide mineralization below the surface oxide mine. Just reinforcing that, you know, the wolf is a good target and that we're, you know, we, we, firmly believe that we're on to something that uh, that could be uh, a good uh, deposit here. Um, so on the right, you can see a few of the uh, the high grade samples that were taken from right around the Wolf Mine. You can see the old shafts there that were in operation uh, in the early 1900s. Uh, this, this shear structure we think was well preserved because it wasn't close to a water source. So they had to haul this mill, this, this ore you know, about five kilometers away to the Helen G mill in Lewiston, where it was processed. And the only records that we have is that, uh, you know, they shipped about 300 tons of ore uh, in the 1900s and uh, recovered about 150 ounces. So half an ounce per ton. So that's consistent with some of the sampling uh, that we've that we've taken along the, the historic structure there. 
Um, but you know, when we started doing our mapping on this, we we found out that it 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 extends for about two and a half kilometers. So our drilling will focus on uh, establishing you know the strike and the width um, you know and trying to determine what what's controlling the mineralization and what the extent of the mineralization is. So what are the next steps? So we'll, we're certainly looking forward to getting our results from the initial drill program here at the Wolf. Uh, and that's gonna be ongoing uh, probably through about the, the second week in November. And then we'll, uh, we'll shut down and, and, and start analyzing all the data that we've collected this year, which includes about um, 3,500 um, meters of drilling. We're drilling as much of that as we possibly can this year. Uh, we also have uh, about 3,500 soil samples to analyze. And so we're getting results back from all of that. And that's going to uh, identify our additional targets at the MIS and on the Mint Shear, uh, where, where we've, we've had, you know, very high, high grades in surface samples. And, uh, um, and then we'll be, you know, delivering this information to the market. So it should be a really exciting year to be a shareholder. And, um, we're looking forward to uh, seeing what the wolf has to offer in terms of uh, potentially economic mineralization. And, uh, you know, I think the important takeaway is also that, um, you know, everybody on our team has, has had a lot of experience with uh, uh, exploring and developing these, uh, these types of projects. And uh, we've all had success doing it. So uh, I'm very confident that we'll be successful again here in Wyoming. And, uh, you know, the hope is to be in reinvigorating the historic gold district in Lewiston. So with that, I guess we can turn it over to questions. Great. Thanks a lot, Wes. Uh, so yeah, now we'll, we'll turn to the Q and a portion of the webinar. Uh, just a reminder to everybody on the line that you can type in your questions at any point, uh, just put them into the chat box uh, on your screen there. Um, so to start off, uh, we have one here. Um, just in terms of uh, drill drilling uh, and the results and stuff, um, are you seeing a, uh, a hold up at the lab? Uh, I know there's a lot of companies out there that are, are struggling with those issues right now. Yeah, you know, we're working through that. Um, you know, earlier this year, we were uh, getting turnaround time in about four weeks. Uh, that's been closer to eight weeks now. Um, and we haven't received any guidance as to um, other than that it's getting better. So, you know, we use ALS Chemex for all of our um, soil sampling and uh, and for the drill core analysis as well. Uh, they do a great job and I'm, I'm confident that we should uh, start to get turnaround on, on those results here, um, you know, definitely within the next month or so. Great, okay. Um, so you mentioned in the presentation, uh, always looking to, you know, make potential acquisitions and grow the land package, uh, building that up, um, you know, is, is the approach there, um, to really, um, as you acquire additional properties or, or all the, the ones you do have now that are less advanced to do systematic, uh, sampling and exploration and really decide on the best ones to advance. Is that kind of the, the strategy there? Yeah, that's that's the strategy. You know, I mean, the the old miners did a great job of highlighting, um, you know, where gold was was found at surface. Um, but we can use other pathfinder elements as well as, you know, uh, uh, ultra trace gold uh, to, to find out where there could be, you know, hidden shear zones. And, um, you know, we certainly found that out at the Wolf as we explored along strike. You know, we actually project the shear to be much, much longer and, and even wider um, than, it, than, it, when the, than we initially thought. And so, um, so yeah, I mean, we've, we've covered the entire district with uh, 3,500, you know, geochem samples this year, um, which is a lot, you know, it's 88 line kilometers is, is what we're covering. And so um, uh, our guys have done a tremendous job in the field we also do structural mapping and uh, and lithological mapping to determine you know what rock units could be a good host for gold within the miners to light sequence and um, and so you know we anticipate that we'll have multiple targets that are going to be ready to drill in 2022 and so the idea is to identify those 
uh, this year. And then, um, you know, certainly we think we have one at the, at, at the, at the mint, um, because that's a high grade share structure. Um, and then also at the MIS, we're, we're doing a bunch of work there on the soils. That's where we're seeing the increase in copper and, uh, and, and some nice surface gold samples as well. So, um, you know, that and also prospecting new areas, right? Um, we have a, a lot of new areas that we're looking at right now and staking new claims on that uh, uh, I think will become uh, viable targets as well. So, it, you know, it's one where we're identifying what's at the wolf, really testing our, our theories here. And, um, you know, we're, we're encouraged by, by what we see so far. I uh, need to get those results, though, and, and then we'll be able to apply what we've learned regionally and, uh, and have several new targets for next year. Great. Okay. And then once, um, I guess, that kind of sampling, prospecting, mapping is, is done, would you um, do any kind of geophysics or IP as you did at Wolf, or how would you go? With yeah, that? I think certainly geophysics can be a very uh, useful tool uh, in the right setting. And I think, I think we've proven that, that it, it does work here. Um, you know, the, the drilling will, will really be the proof, but, uh, but certainly what we see at the Wolf and on other mineralized, known mineralized structures, we see the same signatures. You know, you see a break in the resistivity, which indicates the shear, and then you see a slight increase in sulfides at depth um, or, you know, chargeability at depth. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's another tool that we'll use. Uh, we'll run, you know, some, some magnetic surveys and, uh, and try to see if there's a magnetic signature to the mineralization. Um, and, you know, drilling is really what ties all of this together, right? So all the geophysical work, all the geochemical work and, and the, the mag work, uh, if, you have, if you have drill results underneath, you can really, you know, interpret that a lot better. So if you have that information regionally and you know what it means at depth because you've drilled underneath, you know, the, the wolf, then uh, uh, you're gonna you're gonna be able to apply it in, in different areas. So that's an important part of what we're gonna be working on this winter is is really just you know diving into that and, and and understanding what's causing this mineralization. You know what rock units are are favor favorable hosts and uh, um, you know uh, what what causes these uh, these deep seated uh, you know uh, shear zones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and kind of on that, that same line, um, you know, with kind of this approach to exploration, um, you've also taken steps to um, heavily beef up and, or I guess build a, a technical advisory board with a lot of geologists and geophysicists uh, with a lot of exploration uh, experience in the area. Um, have they already kind of morphed your understanding or approach to exploration or do, do, do that? Does their role really come into it once you start getting uh, drilling results back? No, I think already, you know, we, we've had several of, of our, our advisory board members in the field uh, working this summer. And so uh, Gene Spearing, you know, who is VP of X of Quaterra, lives just up the road in Powell, Wyoming. And, uh, you know, he's been out here um, on in the field. Uh, Ken Sweets, our in-house geophysicist, you know, we still use him as a consultant. And then Pat Hillard, um, you know, who is involved in the discovery of Pierina, um, has also been in the field this summer. So, you know, this is active uh, prospecting, um, you know, field geology. Uh, we want to get our experts into the field. So it's certainly it's shaped how we've uh, interpreted things here. And, uh, you know, the idea really with the drilling and and the and, and collecting all this geochemical data, it's going to allow us to really kind of put together the, the big regional picture, you know, of, of what's going on and what's causing mineralization in different areas. And then also leading us to new areas that may you know, not have been exposed at, at surface. And so, um, you know, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't notice anything if you were, you know, unless you were uh, in the field, you know, doing the work. And so um, I, I think it's, uh, that's been a, a big part of, of what we're doing. Um, you know, we rely on Dan Housel a lot, who's done um, more work in Wyoming than, than anybody else. Um, he was the this geologist for the state of Wyoming for 30 years. And he also was involved with the Donlin Creek discovery. So um, yeah, it's it's great to have guys like that on board, and uh, 
um, you know, to actually get them out in the field too. Great. Okay. Um, turning now to, to just, uh, we have a question here about the, the, the land. Um, you know, you mentioned the, a lot, a lot of the patented land, obviously that's very easy to get going and, and do work and drilling. Uh, in terms of the unpatented land in, in Wyoming, what does the process look like uh, to, to get going and, and doing work on that? Yeah, it's uh, it's very similar to, uh, you know, the BLM lands are, are where, you know, most of the gold mines in the U.S. Mm -hmm. are located. So all of Nevada's BLM, that's what all of our claims are on is we have, you know, some state leases, uh, which it, with the state leases, you just deal with the state of Wyoming on permitting. On the federal lands, you deal with the BLM. The Lander BLM office is, is great to work with. And, um, you know, it's a very straightforward permitting process. Okay, great. Um, okay, I have a question here. Just wondering um, if you could remind them what uh, your cash balance is. And I, I believe you're fully funded through this program and uh, probably look uh, maybe next year to, to get more. Yeah, ex yeah. I mean, we have uh, enough uh, enough cash in our account right now. We had uh, uh, just over two million, I think, uh, as of uh, the last financials, and uh, and so we're fully funded through the this year's drill program, and then we'll have enough left over to continue to do work next year as well. Okay. So uh, don't anticipate needing to go back to market for cash anytime soon. Um, but that being said, you know, we, uh, if we, if we get a strong revaluation upon successful drilling results, you know, that's always a good, good time to take advantage of, uh, of a strong, um, gold market. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Um, and then, um, again, <clears throat> just, um, what, what is your drilling season at the project? And, um, I guess the, with winter coming up, uh, you probably have to take a break then and maybe interpret all the, the information that you, you get from your program. Is that kind of the, the idea? Yeah, well, we started our field season in uh, May of this year and uh, are working, you know, until the snow chases us out. I think there's potential there for, uh, for some winter drilling with subsequent programs, but this being the first program in the district, uh, we wanted to be on the safe side and just plan it from, you know, so we started August 20th and we're going to go until uh, about November 15th uh, with the drilling and, uh, and then, you know, but expiration, you know, the field work uh, can, can take place from about May until, you know, um, American Thanksgiving. So last week in, in November, typically. So unless we have a, you know, a, uh, incredible bl blizzard that chases us out. We'll be there until uh, right around Thanksgiving. Great. Okay. Um, so we are getting out of questions here. Maybe a good way to to wrap up is if you could just uh, once again outline the the key catalysts for investors in the near term. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're we're drilling right now, so the main catalyst is is you know clearly getting our drill results back from the Wolf. I think um, you know uh, new new projects that we have in the pipeline. Uh, we'll be talking about those as well and also getting back all of our geochem uh, data which will help us highlight and reinforce you know these these extra targets uh that we're going to be permitting for the 2022 season um you know for drilling so uh you know i think i think that resource stocks in general um usually have the most excitement around them the most activity around a discovery and so we believe that we're going to make a discovery hole here at the Wolf and uh, and that, you know, next year we'll be resource drilling at the Wolf and making new discoveries at other projects in the district. Great. Fantastic. Lots to, to look forward to in the near term. Um, so with that, I would like to, to thank Wes uh, from Visionary Gold for taking the time to host the webinar today with Red Cloud Securities. And thank you to everybody on the line uh, for tuning in with us. Thank you, Taylor. Perfect.